SpaceX took the first step towards its orbiting internet system late Thursday. This will be the Starlink network. Promising no more buffering and nearly instantaneous internet in every corner of the world. Starlink is a globe encircling network of internet beaming satellites that is trying to get you online no matter where you are in the world. Here's the first lesson you need to understand <laughs> if you're gonna order Starlink. One, you might wait a while. It took me over a year to get off the wait list and actually get the hardware. And by the way, they charge you for it. It was like 550, now I think it's 700 bucks for the hardware. And it's no option, you gotta buy it. They send you only a ground mount array. Okay, so you get the satellite dish, which is actually really cool by the way, because when it boots up, you feel like you're in a futuristic uh, timeline, you're just like, it's you know starts moving around trying to find where you're supposed to go with it and basically it rotates around and finds the best spot for it to be angled uh in your deployment area so i got a lot going on over here right now we're still kind of wrapping up some of the build out here you see like i need to fix up the gravel pad among other things so i put on a barrel so it wasn't just a gray thing on the ground on gray gravel i anchored it down with a couple pieces of rip wrap and I bolted it into the barrel. This is going to be a burn barrel, so I'm going to cut this top off here sooner or later. And I'm going to mount this on the roof. And uh, so, the reason I haven't just designed a simpler way to mount it on the roof yet is because I did order the overpriced official Starlink adapter uh, gable mount whatever device. And basically, it's heavy. It rests on your gable, right? So I've got that peak there, and it's just going to straddle it and then I'm not going to have to drill into the roof. There is a cable that needs to connect to the router modem, right? So that's gonna come down the side of the building behind my uh, electric infrastructure here. And then I'm gonna drill into the side. And specifically, I'm gonna drill in under, right? So it's covered and we're gonna silicone it. And I'm basically just trying to make sure I don't get some kind of uh, leaky scenario. Nobody likes a little sneaky leaky. All of this mining hardware, is uh it's expensive so it's the last thing you want to damage walking in here you can see that this is the mining shed um it's not complete i showed you mining in the other building i have a miner going on in the corner over there so i'm just going to come in on the side right there run the cable down and plug it into this modem i have right here i have it connected to an eero and from the eero i'm, I'm developing a whole uh, mesh wi-fi network I also have Ethernet cables run throughout my area over here that connect to other Eros and they give me hardwired internet uh, throughout my whole mining farm deployment. If you're interested in mining yourself, then something like the plug and play Evergreen Miner would probably be perfect for you. It doesn't make much noise, doesn't produce much heat, doesn't consume much electricity, and it's profitable. It's hard drive mining and it's really easy to use. And with my Evergreen Mining Rig, I'm earning $60 a month in passive income. If that sounds interesting to you, I've got a link out down below that not only supports the channel, but also a coupon code that saves you 20 bucks. So that's the basics of like the, the infrastructure deployment part. I, I mean, I was just, I was a little shocked when, I don't know, I, I had it sitting in a box for months and, and you can't cancel your service. Um, otherwise they don't guarantee you can turn the service back on, even though you're forced to buy the hardware. It's not exactly the, ideal setup but i'm running ethernet to our pod here uh, this is a digital shovel mini pod uh, if you think it's cool you want to grab one say you saw it on boss coin you get a discount if you're going to buy one why not save some money in this game money saved is money earned got cool little codes you know unlock the door access uh so now we're inside here we got ethernet running in here but this is all starlink as well I don't have this thing fully set up yet. I don't have the fans turned on. It's freezing out here, literally. Uh, but I got a couple miners in here. I'm waiting on a couple power cables and stuff like that uh, for like that amp miner. I need two C13 connections down there. But the PDU that this comes with, it's uh, just C20 connections. So you gotta have the right cables. But the point is, the miners in there are mining on Starlink as well. So I've got multiple miners in multiple locations feeding me data. Uh, this is, you know, full disclaimer here, a new deployment. My miner has been operational for maybe a week out here. Finally though, very excited that they are. 
operational out here. Looking at the data, it's been rock solid. It's, it's reforming. I'm not dealing with outages. This is not an ideal deployment at all. When I look at my Starlink, you know, in the app, it shows you blo like blockages and things like that. Um, I'm getting a reduced service uh, signal because it's so close to the shed right here. But I want—I didn't want to move it too far from the shed because I don't want the dang thing to be run over. And, and you know, if you ever work with a bunch of contractors and this, that, whatever, it's uh, you'll just be astonished at the things that happen and the, the problems you end up with. Point being, I don't have an ideal deployment as far as height goes, as far as no blockages and stuff like that. And I am not experiencing outages or interruptions. And, it, and if it is happening, it's very minute and it's not really impacting my mining performance. When I look at the mining pool, I don't have big dips. I don't have big outages. I'm mining consistently. And the pool recognizes that, which means that I'm earning passive income with these miners. They're working with Starlink. And it's pretty freaking cool to be off grid like this with satellite internet. Xfinity, the cable company, wanted to charge me over $40,000 uh, was the last time uh, we, uh, we spoke to them uh, to do this. Whereas instead I can buy just 550 then, 700 bucks of Starlink hardware. Um, but <laughs> that roof mount thing is ridiculously priced. It's like 300 bucks. Oh, this is the most important thing in the whole freaking video. Make sure you're paying attention right now. You have to buy an ethernet adapter, okay? Uh, you can just, you know, do some kind of mesh network, you know, like Google, Wi-Fi, or Eero, whatever, and connect those devices wirelessly. And then you can get Ethernet port from the new routers you added. But when it comes to mining, nothing beats hard wired internet. When you compare the cost, though, it's going to be something like 30 years or more before I break even by paying Xfinity a ridiculous sum to give me internet service where they'll still bill me in perpetuity okay and i'm sure they're going to raise the prices over the years and i, mean, I don't think starlink's not going to be raised in price they've already done it i think believe two times which is crazy uh since i started the service uh but the the keynote here is that i i don't have a 30 40 50 grand bill on top um as great as starlink has been so far um i still want you know, a, a hardwired internet. It's been consistent, right? But what about the speed? Because you don't need that much speed to mine, but maybe you're thinking about doing other things. Like, I don't know, making videos. That's pretty data heavy. Well, let's run a speed test right now. And some of my other speed tests, I've seen this thing hit between 20 and 150 or so megabytes per second. I haven't been running a lot of speed tests um, and I don't really think it's super fair to run a speed test on it um, given my really lame, you know, oil barrel uh, with a little bit of a blockage uh, deployment here. So when you look at the, the visibility and, and I'll throw it up on the screen, you saw it earlier, but you see with the way that it's looking, it only has a couple minor obstructions, but keep in mind that it's also looking that way because of all the obstructions in the other direction. Starlink creates its own wireless setup. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this test through the mesh network that I'm creating. I'm running all my stuff through that network first, so that's actually like the most critical piece. So right now I'm getting 65, 70 megabytes a second, and I'm getting a 28 MS latency there. It's solid, right? I mean, we, we can watch, we can stream on that. It's plenty for mining, that's for sure. A lot of internet services really struggle with upload. That's one thing I've noticed that Starlink actually kind of shines with as opposed to like, say like a 5G hotspot or something like that. Uh, it's got 11 megabytes per second upload here and I don't know if that really updated but showing the same latency at 28 uh, ms so what I'm going to do now is back out and I'm going to go back to wi-fi and from here I can't show you my secret passwords well apparently I can't even put in my own passwords right it's cold though limited functionality in the fingers 
Okay, so now we are connected directly to Starlink. Let's go ahead and run this test again. So look at this difference. This is actually pretty interesting. I'm getting 125 megabytes per second connected directly to the Starlink router. I am getting a lower upload for whatever reason, showing about five megabytes per second. That's a significant increase in the download speed and a surprising difference in the uh, upload speed. And in the name of science, we're gonna do it again. So recreating the test and trying to do it as quickly as I can, switching from the Starlink network to the Eero network. Um, right now I'm getting 55 megabytes per second and about a six megabyte per second upload. So that's pretty interesting. I'm losing about half of my download speed going from the Starlink ethernet port to the Eero to that network. And they're both right inside that shed. I mean, I haven't moved. So definitely a much better performance from the actual Starlink hardware. So to round it out, depending on your scenario, Starlink is absolutely not only a option, but probably the option. High performance, especially when it comes to satellite. I mean, like historically satellite internet has been trash. Oh, there's a cloud. Sorry, your internet doesn't work. Oh, there's a bird. No internet for you. I mean, I even had direct D TV at times uh, when I was younger. That had much higher performance than satellite internet, which I experienced at some of my friend's house that lived out in the boonies. So my experience so far, it's been significantly easier and cheaper to deploy than some hardwired internets because I should have said this earlier, I'll cut this in uh, then too, but I'm about a mile off the road. That's how far you have to run a cable to get internet to me. That is a long distance. That's not just a free tap from their, you know, main data highway that runs along all the roads. That's uh, that's where this big bill comes from. So much cheaper to get started with and something like a 30 plus year break even period. It's, uh, and, and again, it doesn't have to be Starlink. Like, there are some other options. Uh, I, know, I know Verizon has been pushing their 5G home internet option. I've considered trying it. Uh, I'm, I may still try it, but it's not that much cheaper and Starlink is gaining a lot of traction because Elon Musk's satellite internet works. As always, your mileage may vary. There's an app that checks all the Starlink satellites around you or that you can get into contact with uh, with your dish. There's multiple Starlink dishes. Some of the older hardware came with an ethernet port. To my knowledge, all of the newer hardware does not, because why not create a $25 add-on? If you do buy anything Starlink branded, please make sure to go to the Starlink shop and buy it there. It sells for a two to four X or more premium on Amazon and eBay and any other site you probably find. I was looking for the ethernet adapter and at first I just clicked on Amazon it was like $75, ridiculous. Instead, I paid a much less ridiculous, but still ridiculous, $25 in the Starlink shop. Gonna be the same thing for the Starlink mounts and stuff like that if it's actually officially Starlink branded. You know, just make sure you do your research and try it out, give it a spin. Uh, I think they have some kind of 30 day or something trial period uh, once you do start. And I'm assuming that you could also return the hardware um, if you're unhappy with it. Uh, but stuff like that is always a great option. Just make sure you're ready to go and use it when you order it. Because, you know, I paid for Starlink service for about a year before I even got it deployed out here uh, due to delays and trying to actually just get past the wait list and into the beta. And now there's just full service out in my area. You know, hey, I don't want to drone on and on. It's been an interesting experience. Internet and electricity are the lifeblood of digital farming, Bitcoin mining cryptocurrency mining uh so if you ain't got the you got the connection you ain't got the juice you ain't got shit <laughs> and on that note i'm gonna head out my name is vosco on the vosco youtube channel please subscribe and join me on this crazy crypto journey it's had some highs it's had some lows 
but I'm just thankful that I've got some incredible Voxcoin community members at all of you who subscribe and watch our videos week over week. It's just, it means everything. And of course the beautiful Alexa Miss Vosk behind me and the cutest pup in the world. That's going to be Tails, our CSO, our chief Starlink officer here at the Voxcoin YouTube channel. See you later.